My name is Sydney Jackson and I'm a physical therapy student at Marshall University. Today I'm going to go through some postural drainage positions and some manual techniques to use in these positions such as vibrations and percussions during pulmonary rehab. Postural drainage removes mucus from certain parts of the lungs made gravity dependent by positioning. This means when moving the patient in certain positions, gravity can assist the flow of the secretions out from a particular place in the lungs. Before doing postural drainage, there are some precautions and relative contraindications that should be considered. The precautions include pulmonary edema, pulmonary embolism, hemoptysis, which is the coughing up of blood, severe obesity, osteoporosis, rib fracture regardless of flail chest, large pleural effusion, massive ascites, and surgical wounds. The relative contraindications include increased intracranial pressure, hemodynamically unstable patients, recent esophageal anastomosis, recent spinal fusion or injury, recent head trauma, diaphragmatic hernia, and recent eye surgery. Provide an efficient postural drainage treatment is important to gather all the equipment needed beforehand. The equipment you will need readily available are a better table that is capable of Trendelenburg or reverse Trendelenburg, pillows for support, a light towel for percussion, a tissue or basin to catch secretions, suction equipment for those who are unable to clear secretions. As a physical therapist, gloves, gown, and mask will be important a recent CXR if available, and a stethoscope for auscultations. Keep in mind the scheduling for when the postural drainage treatment will occur. Postural drainage works best in the morning to allow any mucus that collected overnight to be removed. Sometimes there may need to be a treatment to reduce coughing at night during sleep. It should be noted that one to two hours should be waited after eating to prevent nausea and vomiting. It will be important to monitor several aspects of the patient's tolerance and response to the treatment. The areas that should be monitored are any subjective complaints of pain, discomfort, dyspnea, and just the general response to therapy, pulse rate, and any dysarrhythmias. It should be noted that moderate rate and rhythm changes are to be expected, but anything drastic would indicate a cessation of the treatment. Other vitals such as blood pressure and uh, oxygen saturation, breathing pattern and rate as well as the symmetry of the chest expansion should also be monitored. Sputum production regarding the quantity, color, consistency, and odor, effectiveness of the coughing and the productivity as well as skin color. When possible, some things to consider before beginning postural drainage is to try and humidify the secretions. It will also be important to use any bronchodilator therapy and uh, give the patient the mucolytics when prescribed. In the portion of the video, I will go through placing the patient into various positions. Before the demonstration begins, please take note of the name of the position and what lung segment is being targeted. Okay, Ms. Harper, do you care to bend up those knees for me? We'll put this pillow okay. underneath your knees. Just relax your legs. Now we're going to sit the head of your bed up, okay? okay? Yep. So go ahead and we'll sit on up. I'm going to take this pillow out. Okay. About 45 right there. You feeling okay? Yeah. Okay. Great. Harper, we'll put this pillow okay. underneath your knees. Just go ahead and bend them up. Okay. And then can you uh, sit up for me? Yeah. Good. And then I just want to bend your head forward okay. a little bit. Keep leaning forward a little bit more. Okay. Good. Feeling okay? Yeah, I feel okay. Great. Right, let's bend those knees up for me. We're going to put this pillow underneath your knees. And uh, can you lift your head up a little bit so we can, there you go, just lay back and relax. Are you feeling okay? Feel good. Okay, great. Ms. Harper, do you care to roll over to your left side for me, please? Thank you. Okay. I'm just going to swing around here. Okay. 
what we need to do is I need to take that pillow out from underneath your head here, if okay. that's okay. Yep. We're just gonna put it underneath your arm, so just relax and roll over on okay. top of it. We're gonna add one more. So okay. just roll your body. Can you move that arm behind you, please? Yep. Thank you. And let's put this uh, pillow between your legs for some comfort. And let's get this bottom leg back a little bit more. Okay. Okay. Feeling all right? Yep. Okay, great. Harper, do you care to roll towards me so you're laying on your right side? We're going to put this pillow sort of underneath your trunk here. And we'll take this pillow too if that's okay. okay. And keep, keep rolling over here towards me. There we go, good. We're going to set the head of your bed up, all okay. right? Yep. There we go. Good. I want to take this pillow and put it underneath your legs here. Okay. Some cover it. And do you care to move that arm so it's behind you? Just let it rest down here. Okay. There you go. Okay. You feeling okay? Yep. Okay, great. So, can you go ahead and roll over towards me? We're just going to take this pillow out. Okay. And put it underneath you on this side, okay. on the right side there. Go ahead and lay your head back. I'll take another pillow and fold it up. Okay. And put it underneath your knees for some comfort okay. and then we'll raise your feet up some so ideally you want this to the table to move as a whole unit um, and have like a 12 inch incline from feet to head here we'll drop your head some okay. but we're doing what we can so you feeling okay yeah. okay great Ms. Harper, do you care to roll over onto your right side here? I'm going to grab the pillow up from underneath your head okay. and we're going to fold it up. Okay. And we're going to put it back here underneath your trunk. So go ahead and lay back. Just relax. And we're going to put this pillow underneath your leg here also. Okay. Or tilt it a little bit. Is that all right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So once again, with this, you would want the table to move as a unit. And you want the incline, starting from the head, lifting your, or the feet, and dropping the head. We'll drop the head down some. Okay. So you'd want a 12 inch incline once again. You feeling okay? Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, Ms. Harper, do you care to sit on up so I can take this yeah. pillow for you? You can lay back down, just okay. relax. Okay, we're going to bend the pillow, put it underneath your knees. Go ahead and relax, put them underneath there. And we'll raise the foot of the bed up. Okay. Just keep those knees bent. And we'll lower your head down. Okay. Okay. Just relax. So once again, with this one, you would want the um, table to you to uh, move and tilt as a unit. And you would want the foot of the bed from the head of the bed to have about an 18 inch incline, like the raise the feet about 18 inches. Are you feeling okay? Yeah. Okay, great. So we're going to try to drain our left flank here. Okay. So if you don't care, can you roll over onto your right side? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to come around and I'm going to steal this pillow okay. out from my knee. Just go ahead and relax. Okay. Fold this pillow up and you want to tuck it under your chest here. You can just relax your arm okay. on it. Just relax your whole body. Okay. And we're going to put this uh, pillow beneath your legs here. Okay. Straighten it out. So once again, you're going to want the table to tilt as a whole. And we're going to raise the legs up about 18 inches. So there's an incline from the feet to the head. We're going to drop your head. Okay. You feeling all right? Yeah. Okay, great. Harper, do you care to roll over on your belly for me? As you're rolling, we're going to move this pillow. Okay. So it's underneath your chest okay. there. There we go. Way back. Okay. There we go. Relax. Do you care to bend your knees up for me? Mm -hmm. You want to put a pillow underneath your feet, so just come on down. Okay. 
and we're going to raise your legs up okay. about 18 inches. Okay. Once again, you'd want the table to move as a whole unit, and we're going to drop your head. Are you ready? Uh -huh. Don't forget, 18 inches with the feet raised, tilted from the feet down to the head. You feeling all right? I feel good. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, Miss Harper, do you care to roll over on your belly for me? You want to steal this pillow that's underneath your head and put it underneath your chest, okay. way underneath there. Okay. There, good. Just relax those arms, let them fall down. There you go. And can you bend those knees up for me? Bring them down, there's a pillow there. And just relax. Are you feeling okay? Yeah. Okay, great. Trendelenburg and reverse Trendelenburg are also important positions that assist with drainage and respiration. Unfortunately, we do not have beds that are capable of achieving Trendelenburg or reverse Trendelenburg. Please take a moment to enjoy these graphics that show these positions as well as the indications and contraindications for each position. Now I would like to discuss the manual secretion clearing techniques percussions and vibrations that can be used in all the previously demonstrated positions. So, percussions are used for those heavy secretions that are difficult to expectorate on your own. So when you're doing this technique, it can cause a lot of discomfort for the patient. So you want to maintain cupped hands and use a towel over the segment that you are um, going to be percussing. So, with this technique, and your hands cupped, get over the segment and begin your percussions. The percussion should be rapid with only the motion coming from the wrist, as so. This technique will be done for about three to five minutes in this segment before you move to a different zone. At a treatment time, you would move to two or three zones within a treatment session. are used along with percussions to help move mucus from the um, more peripheral smaller airways to the uh, larger airways that are located centrally. Now vibrations are good to facilitate deep breathing in patients who are acute and may not be able to handle the um, percussions or the instructions to deep breathe. So deep breathing and huffing in those acutely ill patients along with the percussions to help move the mucus. So um, in this technique, you want to interlock your fingers and have a rapid motion that is moving from the peripheral to central. Unlike percussions that can occur during inspiration or expiration, this is only done with expiration. So feel your patient's breathing pattern and upon expiration, begin your vibrations. I hope you have enjoyed this educational video demonstration. Thank you and remember to choose PT.